I wish I had heard more stories like mine before. Um, I wish there was space for stories like mine so I could feel less alone and less like we failed. And I do often feel like like I'm less of his mom because I don't nurse him. Anybody can feed him the bottle and I hate that feeling. I think it's gonna take me a while to move past this. I'm just really hopeful that maybe with a future child, things will be different. friends welcome to the sunshine farm I'm Jen and today I'm going to be talking about something different I want to share with you about my journey with breastfeeding in pregnancy and before pregnancy even I was always one of those people that kind of was the breast is best mentality thinking that you know breastfeeding was the best it's natural it has to be possible for most people and I thought I was gonna be perfectly ready because I saw my sister go through it and I knew about tongue ties and lip ties and I knew how to address those things. I knew how to get in touch with lactation consultants. I had all these resources and knowledge. I took a breastfeeding class. I, I was so set up for success in my mind that how could it not work for us? November 14th, I had Malachi. I went into labor on his due date, November 13th, at midnight, around midnight, and then I went into active labor around 6 a.m., and by 3 p.m. on November 14th, he was here. I had a vaginal delivery, no complications, um, some minor tearing, some minor blood loss, but uh, really smooth labor, all um, unmedicated. I remember them trying to latch him um, right away, which is, I guess, just pretty normal, but it was kind of stressful because at the same time they were stitching me up and I was in a lot of pain from that. And um, we just decided to just like, let's just wait a little bit. And so when we finally did um, try again, it went perfectly. I thought that um, it, was, it wasn't comfortable. It was, it was somewhat painful, but he seemed to have a really good latch and that continued actually for the first couple days of life. So while we were at the hospital, it seemed to be going well. His weight gain was really good. He only lost like 4% of his body weight and then was gaining really well. After that, he had a little jaundice but was clearing up really well. And so we went home after 48 hours and things were off to a great start. I scheduled a meeting with a lactation consultant just to make sure that things were going well and that it wasn't just my perspective, but that they actually also thought things were going well. So she came, I think, a few days after we got home. It may have even been just a couple days. And she helped me figure out how to latch him better and things seemed to be going really smoothly. And then we got to around three weeks and I started just being really anxious about my supply. I felt like I never had milk, um, which I know is a really common anxiety that a lot of women experience. And so I thought maybe it's just in my head, but I thought it was a good idea to have the lactation consultant come out again to do a weighted feed to see how much she was taking at a time and to check for any ties. So at three weeks old, she came out and she did a weighted feed and he was taking in about an ounce at a time which um, I wasn't that concerned about yet because he was still only three weeks old and an ounce at a time isn't that little and you know it can vary right throughout the day. Maybe he was taking more like two or three ounces at night and maybe only an ounce that one feed. She weighed him when she was there and his growth was starting to slow down a little bit. So uh, at that appointment she did notice that he had a posterior tie and uh, buccal ties on the side as well as a lip tie. So he had three different ties. So we decided it would be a good idea to go and get those released 
because maybe those were affecting his function and ability to transfer milk um, effectively. So we were actually able to get into a pediatric dentist the next day, an hour and a half away. So we drove down to Ithaca and in my mind, I just thought this is going to solve all of our problems because that's what solved my sister's problems. And I'd heard so many stories of, of getting ties released and that solving people's problems. So we went and got those released and I remember the dentist said, you know, this isn't a quick fix. Oftentimes it takes a while for babies to relearn um, how to nurse with their new like oral function and um, you, it might take a while to see results. So after that appointment, he was, he was fine. He wasn't too upset. He wasn't too irritable. Um, but he did seem to have some difficulty with figuring out how to use his mouth the same way. So it took him um, a while before he would regularly suck on things properly. He would often like push with his tongue and he was very disorganized with his mouth. And that caused a lot of difficulty with nursing um, in the following weeks. So we had an appointment from when he was around four weeks with the pediatrician and his weight gain had slowed. And so they wanted to do a follow-up in around 12 days to see how things looked then so that we could make a decision about whether he needed to be supplemented or what we were going to do next. I was starting to pump um, after multiple nursing sessions every day to make sure my body knew to keep making more milk and that became really stressful and uncomfortable and I didn't know how to pump and I tried a million different flange sizes. I would switch back and forth between flange sizes. I was really confused about how to pump effectively. I would barely get anything out and it was just a mess. So pumping was not going well. <laughs> I was just hoping that we'd get back to nursing 100% of the time that he would learn how to nurse effectively and that our relationship with nursing would just be, would just improve. Over that 12 day period, I was nursing him all the time. I was feeding him as much as I could at night. Um, I was feeding him as much as I could during the day. We were topping him off with milk that I would get from the haka and that I would get from pumping after nursing sessions. And we were just trying to do as much as we could to make sure that he would gain weight. So I was really hopeful that he would have excellent weight gain. He looked bigger to me. Um, I felt like he was growing out of his clothes. He seemed happier, pretty content. And I thought, okay, I think we're gonna be good. So we go in, um, his appointment, I think it was right before Christmas. It was just a couple of days before Christmas, maybe like the 20, 22nd or 23rd. And we, go in and you know they have him undress and they go to weigh him and the scales in grams so i knew what he was in pounds but i didn't know what he was in grams so i looked at the scale um, i kind of thought i was a little confused because i was thinking that looks like the same weight that he was last time he can't be the same weight there's no way he didn't gain anything um, but i went and quickly calculated it on my phone to see if he had actually gained any weight and what I had thought I had seen on the scale said that he gained zero weight in that 12 day period. So not a single ounce. And the goal is about, about an ounce a day. So I was hoping that maybe I just saw things wrong and that wouldn't be the case, but I knew I was wrong when they had a provider come in instead of a nurse. And she, you know, said he hasn't gained anything. And I just, um, was so sad because I knew that he, we were doing everything that we could. I was feeding him as much as I possibly could around the clock. And I knew that him not gaining anything in that almost two week period meant that things were going to have to change and we were going to have to try something else. She said she wanted us to supplement two ounces of breast milk or formula after every feed. So that was, you know, he was eating like eight times a day. So that was an extra 16 ounces a day that she wanted us to give him. So that point we started doing that. I was pumping and using the Hakka. Um, and I had a small breast milk storage stash from early on. 
So essentially what she wanted us to do was to triple feed, which is nursing and then pumping and then feeding whatever you pump. Um, and now when we started doing this, the good news is he started gaining much better. He gained five ounces in a two day period, um, which told us that he's just not able to get enough milk from me nursing. And so that's why he's not gaining weight. So we figured that out. It's December 26th. It's 26th. It's a day after Christmas. I'm so tired right now. I'm really sleepy and I'm not sure if it's because of this medication I'm taking or because I'm new mom. But my whole body just feels so tired and just like weak. So I'm just sitting here. I'm bouncing Kai with my foot. Hi Kai. So I'm taking medication for my milk supply right now and it's not a medication I'm really excited about because it has a lot of potential side effects um, and it's not even necessarily going to work for milk supply. So I don't really know how I feel about it. I'm going to try it for another week and then if I don't notice any change, I'm going to get off of it. I'm just really struggling with breastfeeding and Kai's struggling. He's not latching very well. He's not eating very well. Um, breastfeeding wise and I'm not producing very well so the two of us together aren't aren't doing so well so I'm pumping all the time um, after I feed him and giving him all that I pump and then we're supplementing him with milk that I pumped early on that I froze and then um, we have donor breast milk that we'll have to start using in a couple days um, to supplement him on top of that because he did not gain well I am exhausted from breastfeeding and pumping and struggling and all I wanted was to be able to breastfeed him. Um, sorry, makes me emotional. But it's so emotional and stressful and it's just not working. <laughs> and I just don't know what I want to do. I don't know. Um, if I want to stop, if I want to just pump and just give him what I pump, if I want to, I just don't, I don't know what's next. And it just takes over my entire, like, mind. I think I've cried every day for the past week over it. Um, and I just have no energy, so. In my head, even though the logical answer would have been he wasn't able to transfer enough milk and it was something going on with him, in my head, I blame myself. I thought it was my milk supply. I thought I was never going to be able to have a milk supply. I was never going to be able to feed him enough. I was never going to be able to nurse another baby in the future because something's wrong with me. I don't have enough milk. I don't make enough milk. And that's why he's not gaining weight. It wasn't until I started pumping around the clock um, that I realized that my milk supply was improving. And I went from making about 18 ounces a day to over 30 ounces a day in like a month period. It took a while before I realized this isn't me. There's nothing wrong, wrong with me. He's just not able to get enough milk. And we didn't really understand why and so we started looking for answers. I started nursing less and less because he was getting almost nothing. The more we used the bottle, the worse he was at nursing. We tried SNS systems, which is using a, like a tube uh, connected to a container of milk, and then they suck. They're still nursing at the breast, but they're getting milk through a tube at the same time. And he would transfer basically nothing from me at that time. I tried um, doing nipple shields. He would get pretty much nothing. We tried using pace feeding with a bottle so that he would be more patient. I tried pumping before nursing to see if I could get milk flowing and he would be more successful that way. Um, I tried pumping on one side while he nursed, still didn't get anything. I tried um, using lots of hand compressions and nothing. And it was like the more he took the bottle, he just couldn't nurse anymore. It was like he couldn't be effective at all nursing. The earlier skills he had with nursing were just completely gone the more and more we used the bottle. 
which is pretty heartbreaking for me because the bottle was the only way he was able to get enough milk and he was doing so well with the bottle and so it was really hard for me to see my goals and my desires not matching what worked for my baby. Pumping was not what I wanted. I hate pumping. It takes so long. It takes me about 40 minutes each time. I have to pump for 20 minutes, then I have to take a 10 minutes break, and then I pump for 10 more minutes. That's how I get all the milk out. I have to do that pretty much every time. At, at that time, I was doing it nine or 10 times a day and every two hours during the day, and I was only sleeping for three hours at night. And it was really, really, really hard. I can't believe I even ever did that. But eventually my milk supply got up and I was still a little bit short for what he was taking because he was wanting more than 30 ounces a day and that's pretty much what I was making. So I actually decided to get on a medication. So then I started taking a medication and it was making me really depressed um, and really anxious. So I was really hopeful that that medication would solve our problems. It would give me enough milk supply that he would be able to get all the milk really easily nursing. But I couldn't even take the medication for five days because it was making me feel so horrible. So I got off of that medication. And then I ordered another medication that I had to order overseas because it's not available in the US. And I had to wait like three weeks to get it. And in those three weeks, I was just hoping once I get on the medication and my milk supply is high, you know, like 40 ounces a day, then maybe he'll be able to get it really easily. Maybe he'll be able to nurse. Maybe our journey will be, you know, very redemptive and um, we'll get there. And the medication came and I started getting on it and my milk supply continued to improve to the point where I was making 36 or more ounces a day and nothing changed for him. Still not getting any milk when he nursed still often very fussy when nursing, really hated nursing, wouldn't latch, much preferred the bottle. And so it, it just wasn't working, nothing was working. So after pumping to improve my milk supply and starting to realize that it wasn't, the issues weren't on my end, then I started trying to figure out, we started trying to figure out, well, what are the issues on his end that are causing the problems? So we went to see a lot of different therapists. First, we saw the breastfeeding clinic that has lactation consultants and MDs, and they said that his palate was extremely high. She was basically unable to help us. She said, you know, these kids are the really, really tough cases because there's really not a lot we can do to, to help you. We recommend you see a speech language pathologist to work on suck training and feeding. So we went to see a speech language pathologist and she was wonderful. She had a lot of hope for him and for, for our nursing relationship. She was really excited to see so much progress in him in the first couple weeks of seeing him. Um, we were able to find the right bottles for him so that he was able to transfer milk quickly and effectively. And she saw his suck really improve, and as did I, through changing bottles and working on some different exercises. I remember at her last visit, she said, you know, he has all the skills. Um, I just want to see him use them when he's nursing. And at that point, I mean, that was months ago now, I was just like, okay, well, he's just got to figure out how to use the same skills nursing. And really hopeful that he would figure that out. And he just <laughs> never did. We saw the feeding therapist and then we saw a chiropractor for a while. At the same time, we were seeing a craniosacral therapist who was helping relax tension in his body and to see if that releasing that tension would allow his palate to kind of um, spread out instead of continuing to go up. But his palate is still, it's like, it's like a cave up there. It's so high. Just when the palate is forming early, early, early on in utero, it can form incorrectly. And in his case, it's like a bubble. <laughs> you put your finger up there and it's just like so high. And when you're nursing, you have to compress, you have to compress the tissue on the top of your mouth in order to extract milk from it. And he can't do that effectively because the top of his mouth is so high that he can't push anything up there. So a bottle works because with a bottle, you don't have to have the same kind of pressure to get milk out. You just have to suck on the bottle. 
and that's not necessarily how nursing works. We pretty much discovered that his issues were due to his high palate. His tongue tie was released and he had full function of his tongue and his mouth. He was able to use that part of his mouth, but because the palate was so high and nothing was really helping change that, we weren't able to address the issue that was causing his difficulty nursing. Where are we now? He's almost six months old. What are we doing and how did we get here? I was super hopeful that by four months, five months, six months, we would be nursing. I thought his, he's gonna grow, his mouth's gonna grow, he's going to be able to do it and it will all be worth it. And that's not what happened. You know, my hopes um, didn't come to fruition. I'm still pumping, but I'm able to only pump five times a day and still make enough milk, which is, I'm probably making like 38 ounces a day. And that's a, a little bit more than he's taking a day. I'm still taking the medication because it seems to help me continue to have a good milk supply. I'm not gonna mention the medication or provide any information on that because it's not something that you can get in the US and I don't want to provide any medical recommendation whatsoever. So I just encourage you to do research on your own and to talk to your medical providers and talk to lactation consultants about options that might work for you if that's something you're looking to address. And we're not nursing. Sometimes I nurse him to bed with a nipple shield because that's the only way he'll nurse now is if I have a nipple shield. Um, there was a few weeks ago where he was nursing himself to sleep without a nipple shield and that was really, really sweet moments. He was actually nursing pretty well, not transferring anything, but he was calm, he was happy, he was just using it as comfort and I really cherish those moments. So I might continue to try to do that. I'm not sure. I'm at the point now where we tried so much and I know I could keep trying. I know I could try other things, but it gives me a lot of anxiety to go back down that road when it's just disappointed me so many times. There were so many times where I thought, oh, this new, th this new thing we're going to do is going to, is going to save our journey. Um, this, this chiropractor is going to save our journey. This cranial sacral therapist is going to save our journey. This nipple shield is going to save our journey. This medication is going to save our journey. And you know what? The only thing that's going to save our journey at this point is me just letting go. <laughs> and just accepting reality and what is and appreciating what I'm able to do. <sighs> Sorry. I knew I was gonna cry recording this. This like I postponed it for so long. I'm at the point now where what we're doing is working. Um, we're six months in. He is growing so well. He's gone from being seventh percentile when his issues were at their worst to over twenty percentile. Um, he's so happy. He's the happiest baby so sweet he's thriving he's starting to sit up on his own and soon we're going to be starting solid foods and he's going to get to try food from the garden that i've grown myself and that's going to be so fun he's been on my own breast milk for months and months and months now um and he will continue to be as long as i keep pumping my goal is to pump until he is a year old or to have enough milk until he's a year old and then I will start to wean him from breast milk at that point. I just, I was, you know, one of those moms who really romanticized nursing and having that relationship with him. I was one of those moms who wanted to nurse for years instead of just a year. I wanted to be a mom that nursed my baby until they self-weaned when they were two or maybe even three. One of those, you know, naturally minded, which is totally a great way to be. And I wish I could still be that way with him, but it just didn't work. And I remember when 
I um, was a couple days postpartum. I got the pump out for the first time to pump to see how it worked because I figured I'm gonna have to use this at some point might as well know how to use it and so I got it out and I started pumping and basically nothing was coming out I had no idea what I was doing I had no idea there was still a learning curve with pumping <sighs> and I finished pumping and I told Chris I don't know why anyone would exclusively pump because I had heard stories of people who exclusively pumped and I just thought I don't know why anyone would do that they when they can just like try to figure out latching for their baby <laughs> looking back at that person I was so um, naive to the struggles that people can have now my perspective has definitely changed any mom who decides not to do the pumping route I give so much credit to because a lot of the times continuing to pump honestly feels more selfish to me than if I just decided to do formula because he would be happy either way and pumping is such an emotional toll on me it it takes me away from him um, I don't get all the time I don't get to you know wear him for his naps or um, spend as much time with him because I'm pumping so often <laughs> So it does, it does take a toll on me, it takes a toll on my time with him. And any mom who decides not to do that, I completely respect and understand. I also think there's so much information out there saying, you know, anyone who isn't able to breastfeed just doesn't have the support they need. It's totally possible for everyone. I think that's a lie because it's not true and if it, isn't possible for you you're going to feel like something's wrong with you why doesn't it work for you when it's supposed to be possible for everyone and I just think that's not true um, some babies it can't nurse um, some women can't breastfeed and it's not the end of the world um, there is formula there is donor milk um, and I just wish there was more acceptance for when it doesn't work for you I wish there was more space to connect with other moms who didn't have a redeeming journey where everything worked out in the end. And I just had so many people tell me, like, it'll get better, like, I really struggled too, and now we have it, or um, it took me a few months before we were really successful, and I don't have that ending that I wanted. <laughs> and um, I just... I wish I had heard more stories like mine before. Um, I wish there was space for stories like mine so I could feel less alone and less like we failed. And I do often feel like, like I'm less of his mom because I don't nurse him. Anybody can feed him a bottle, and I hate that feeling. I know some people really love that, like that anyone can give their baby a bottle, but personally, I wish that only I could feed him. I wish that we had that connection. I think it's going to take me a while to move past this. I'm just really hopeful that maybe with a future child, things will be different. And I know in a year from now, it won't matter anymore. Um, he won't even be nursing. He'll be past it. He won't even be on breast milk. He'll be eating all kinds of yummy things from our garden. And um, he'll be a toddler. <laughs> but it's still hard, as you can tell. I will say... This is the first time I've cried about it in months and I didn't think I would ever get to the point where I wouldn't be crying every single day. Um, those early months I was crying daily about it, just feeling heartbroken and devastated and depressed. And it's a lot better now. Um, and to anybody else who's, to anybody else who's struggling, I just want you to know that you are an amazing mom. You're an amazing parent. You're exactly what your child needs. 
because those are the words that I know are true for myself even if I don't feel them all the time and regardless of what choice you make I know you're making it for your child because as a mom that's just what we do whether I nurse whether I bottle feed whether I formula feed I know all of those decisions would be made for my child and for his needs that's our story and yes I'm still heartbroken about it but I know that my experience happened for a reason and I can share it with other people and it just shows how much I love my son that I'm willing to do the thing I never thought I would do so that I can feed him Thanks for being here. If you have a story you want to share, I encourage you to share it in the comments so that other people who are going through things like this feel less alone. I would love to hear your stories, even if they're different than mine. And I appreciate all of you being here.